Senator from Mississippi. Senator Madam Chair, I have a letter here from Andy Gibson, the Commissioner of the Department of Agriculture and Commerce of the state of Mississippi. And um, in essence, um, uh, Commissioner Gibson um, is writing to support Chairman Barrasso's efforts to bring transparency and state input back into the consideration of endangered species, and I would like to ask that this letter be in, included in the record at this Without time. objection. Um, Mr. McCormick, um, we're delighted to have you before us, and uh, I want to ask you about two programs uh, that we're kind of proud of in the state of Mississippi and in the southeast as a way to balance economic activity with species conservation. One would be the Mississippi Bee Stewardship Program. It might come as a surprise to some of our viewers and listeners this morning at this hearing that, that uh, we would even need a bee stewardship program. Talk to us about that, and then, and if you don't mind, shift over then to the fact that, that uh, the Louisiana black bear, uh, we've been so successful in, in providing habitat for them that we've been able to delist that species uh, from the endangered species list. So if you'd talk about those two, it would help us a bit. Well, thank you, Senator. It's an honor to be here with you today and, and with the committee. Uh, we're very proud of the, uh, the bee pollinator voluntary uh, program that we have that we developed in the state of Mississippi. Uh, I think that we were on the cutting edge of, of realizing that this was going to be an issue nationally and that uh, we need to, uh, to address it in Mississippi uh, with our uh, with our farmers and our beekeepers and with our uh, agencies to see what we could do better uh, for all of us to uh, to uh, um, work in our industries and, and create a uh, a foster a good relationship between us. So uh, we sat down uh, with our beekeepers and our farmers and our our government ag governmental agencies, including uh, the Department of Agriculture and Mississippi State and just created a dialogue to see what was uh, the issues, how could we work better together, uh, what resources were needed, and we felt like that if we could come up with the answers to those where we could all work together uh, on our farms uh, to keep uh, something being manda mandated and do it on a voluntary basis that certainly our farmers and our beekeepers were, would be much better off. What we found that's happened is, is we've opened up a dialogue between our beekeepers and our farmers to where we have a good working relationship. Uh, we have uh, seen in other parts of the, the nation uh, where those conversations can uh, be contentious, but our group has found that uh, uh, they understand that, that a beekeeper is a guest of a, of a row crop farmer when his, his hives are on their property, and the row crop farmer finds value of those bees being there. We just got to find a common goal and some commonality on how we can protect one another uh, and uh, continue uh, to uh, uh, have economic uh, uh, gain on our farms. Uh, so the, the, the program itself was, was pretty simple. The basis of it was just continuing a dialogue. Uh, we've uh, found things uh, that were very helpful, uh, like our Be Aware flag uh, that we uh, developed uh, that you can put near hives uh, to keep the uh, crop uh, the applicators uh, from accidentally spraying bee yards. Uh, that was very positive, and everybody found that to be... Uh, uh, something of use. Uh, the, we, the bottom line is it's a voluntary program. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, consensus uh, among the parties, and it's it's been successful. It's been highly successful and, and adopted across the U.S. as the best voluntary program to get beekeepers and farmers working collaboratively now, we, together. We also have a right to be proud of uh, the fact that, that we've been able to delist the Louisiana black bear. Absolutely, and farmers, I think, have been a big part of that. The habitat that the bear enjoys, uh, a lot of it along the Mississippi River where I live, uh, is uh, bear habitat, and uh, I think uh, a lot of the work that we've done as farmers uh, creating uh, and uh, uh, maintaining the habitat for the black bears has been crucial in delisting that. We, we enjoy seeing them. One other thing quickly, Madam Chair, if I might. Um, the double-crested cormorant um, is legally protected um, according to the Migratory Bird Treaties and, and law, but also it, it, it can be a pest to fisheries and aquaculture. Um, is it your position that the, that the state of Mississippi is in a better position to deal with this on a state basis rather than being mandated federally? 
very clearly, Senator. We, the state has the resources to have the biologists and the, uh, uh, the wildlife officials out on the farm so they can get there quicker, they can determine the, the problem and the solution a lot faster uh, from a state basis than we could from a federal basis. And, and, and it's an economic, uh, it, the impact of, of, of this cormorant on fisheries and aquaculture uh, small businesses is, is, is enormous if, if we don't handle it right. Is that correct? Yes, sir. It's the number one issue that I hear when I talk to our catfish farmers uh, is this, this depredation issue. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you being with us, and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Senator Gillibrand.